All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us in our uh, November edition of Pitch Perfect here. Super excited to have a great panel of speakers today. So kicking things off, um, the, the presentation today may contain forward-looking information. So there can be no assurance that forward-looking information will prove to be accurate as actual results and future events could differ materially from those anticipated in such statements. Accordingly, viewers should not place undue reliance on forward-looking information. All right, now I uh, would like to turn things over to Brian from Persephone for the, the last pitch presentation that we have today. So Persephone is an award-winning BC-based brewery that puts sustainability, accountability, and community at the forefront of their business. So Brian would uh, love to hear more from you about Persephone. Thank you. Uh, and just tech check here, you can see my shared screen okay? Looks fantastic. Okay, thanks. Uh, and thanks for all of the uh, support and the previous um, uh, speakers. Um, nice work, everyone. Uh, okay, so jumping into Persephone Brewing Company, uh, where many of you might be familiar with us because we are in our 10th year of operations uh, and fairly prevalent and available in Western Canada. So throughout BC, uh, much of Alberta and the Yukon, you can find our beer. We came out of uh, the COVID situation 2020 and 2021 with as our with our most profitable years ever and in our strongest position, uh, so we decided to expand. Um, we're a farm based brewery uh, on the Sunshine Coast in, in a town called Gibson's in a relatively small community and so we felt like it's time to expand and, and we, we chose this um, kind of byline of bees beers and bowling. Um, intentionally. Bees, of course, is referring to the farming and, and, uh, and how critical pollinators are to our farming and food systems. Beers are obviously, uh, you know, sort of obviously connected to our, our product line. And we also feel like, like Stephen mentioned, that that beers bring us together. Often, you know, the, some of our best conversations are around a kitchen table where, you know, the beers are being shared and so on. And then bowling was a, a bit of a, a nod to kind of who we are, and in particular that we believe in building community everywhere we go. Um, and nobody needs to bowl alone. And it's also maybe a hint towards one of the expansion venues that we're looking at, which actually has a bowling alley in it. Um, so uh, not not fully committed to that yet, but it may, may in fact be an opportunity to have a beer and bowl. So these are the components that make us, uh, you know, a strong company, a good investment and differentiate us in the marketplace that is, you know, admittedly quite competitive. We've got world-class award-winning products. I'll, I'll, I'll speak a bit more about that in a second. We've got a great team. In fact, our first employer was, uh, employee was our brewmaster, Anders McKinnon, and he's still our brewmaster. Um, and uh, all of our senior managers have been with the company for seven or eight years uh, or more. Um, so really strong team, great experience for anyone who gets a chance to come to the Sunshine Coast because uh, almost half of our farm, so that's around five acres, is actually licensed. And uh, so people can grab their beer from the tasting room, head down to the chicken coop, or go watch the bees or the flowers. Um, so it's a pretty extraordinary experience. Um, strong, growing company, regenerative farm, uh, and you know, regenerative is a key element. I'll, I'll speak a bit about that more. But uh, and we're very sort of values driven. So we are a certified B Corp and have been from almost the beginning. We're also a certified B friendly farm and salmon safe certified. And so we're using these mechanisms to really kind of, you know, wear our values on our sleeve and be held accountable. Um, products, uh, so these are our core, some of our core uh, products. Um, and, and yet we've brewed somewhere in the territory of 65 or more beers over the, you know, over the last 10 years, uh, because frankly, the craft beer market is fickle. And they always like something new. And yet these listings, these you know, core products uh, do well for us, have listings in liquor stores and beer uh, and wine and um, on-site accounts you know, across rest Western Canada. And then our commitment to really being an impact-focused company is uh, sincere. And these are a few of the ways that we you know, do that, managing our waste. Uh, so spent grain and hops become compost, which becomes amendment for our fields. Agritourism and community building is just a part of who we are. Uh, we're a part of the local food system. In fact, during COVID, we doubled down on food and used all of our uh, delivery car uh, trucks and our sales rep vehicles to deliver groceries from the local grocery stores to um, marginalized communities, uh, especially seniors. Um, and what was interesting during that time when we doubled down on food, 
they started asking, hey, can you bring a six pack with you? And so the, our sales grew in 2020 more than ever, even though people couldn't come to our farm. Um, and, and so that commitment to being an impact company is, is, um, is a, an important part of who we are. So our expansion is uh, essentially sort of putting it in three buckets, some expansion and growth on the farm, including adding some pavilions uh, next to our tasting rooms to increase our, our on-site sales. We'll add some cabins for some affordable housing for farmers and for our staff. Uh, and we're gonna add an RTD uh, ready to drink product um, which is coming to market, uh, well, almost as we speak. Um, and then off of the Sunshine Coast, off the farm, we're going to do a number of expansion projects. We're already uh, in partnership with a, a group on Brewers Row in Port Moody and opening a site there uh, later this year or early next year. Um, we're looking at the Bowling Alley project. We're looking at a space on Granville Island and another one out in the Fraser Valley. And so these uh, additional venues will allow our shareholders and our customers to connect with us, even if they can't get to the Sunshine Coast and take that ferry ride. And then we're growing our crowd and our, our growth path is really sort of following the brew dog example of where they grew their crowd, which helped capitalize their expansion, which helped grow their crowd and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's how, how we'll be uh, moving forward too. So, you know, needless to say, get in touch if you're interested, uh, raising on Front Funder um, and, and we're easy to find. Um, and, I'll, and I'll pause there for questions, uh, although I, I'll admit I have a couple extra slides just in case we need them. Perfect. Well, uh, thanks so much for the, the pitch presentation there, Brian. It's great hearing more about the, the story and what you guys do. So as Brian said, for anyone with questions, do uh, do throw them in the Q&A there. I know uh, for, for myself, I've been with FrontFunder for over three years now, and I've been actually an investor on the FrontFunder platform for over four. Um, but that was still years after you guys did your initial campaign on FrontFunder in 2016. So perhaps you can uh, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to come back from to FrontFunder for another round and uh, really, I imagine significant changes with the business between then and now, but uh, perhaps you can highlight some of that as well. Yeah, uh, thanks. Um, we, and I sort of layer this into the narrative on our Front Funder campaign page. Uh, so if people sort of want to, wants to hear our story of since 2016, it's in there. But, but suffice it to say, what it boiled down to us was that when we built that crowd of, at that time, around 159 shareholders, they became much of our backbone. So they became ambassadors for us. They became advocates for us. They started to introduce their friends and family and bring them over to the farm. And when we had adversity, uh, for example, we had a, a run-in with the provincial government around agricultural land, those shareholders became our strongest you know, advocates and partners in addressing that issue. And, and in fact, we're you know, instrumental in us changing provincial legislation to allow on-farm breweries in BC. So as we started to think about what expansion should be, we knew that it in, needed to include our crowd and that we needed to grow that crowd. So each community that we're going to go into, we want to do a fun fund around and build that crowd there and so on and so forth. And we can start to really sort of have an impact, not just on the Sunshine Coast, but uh, at least in Western Canada and maybe beyond. Um, you know, changes over 10 years, of course, uh, are significant, uh, everything from expansion of our brewing capacity to uh, really digging deep and, and I'm intentionally using that pun around regenerative agriculture. Uh, so we've stopped tilling, we use cover crops, we use our chickens to, uh, to help um, propagate a really healthy food system on the farm. Um, and our sales and distribution has grown significantly. So in 2016, we probably had a couple hundred accounts. We now have you know, upwards of 2,000 accounts, both on-site and off-site across Western Canada. So the company has grown and we've become profitable you know, in, the, in that period as well. That's incredible. And, uh, you know, really love hearing that about the, the shareholders and, you know, how they they became such an important aspect of the company itself. Um, there's a term we like to use for, for equity crowdfunding. It's really community capital, because that's what it's all about. You're creating a community there. So that's great, great to hear. And in terms of the, the growth of the company, like that's uh, amazing to see that progression. Um, we did have a question come through from Florian about uh, how much revenue we're able to generate in the last year. So perhaps you can provide some insights on that. Yeah, we're doing uh, something of around uh, $3 million a year, uh, and you can get access to our financial statements. Uh, just sign up with Front Funder and then ask them. They'll get an NDA, and we can share. We're quite open with our financial statements, and, and we think it's a part of who we are, of being accountable, and, and this is a big part. Maybe I'll 
uh, segue Trias to one of the yep. other questions on, on our list around certifications. You know, we really want to be transparent and accountable for the statements we make. So the B Corp certification, you know, helps us it helps prevent greenwashing. Same with the you know B friendly and the salmon safe. Uh, and so, you know, our engagement with our shareholders and with our community is is very much sort of open book. That's amazing. Well, I was going to get into that B Corp question, but you tackled it already, which is uh, fantastic. So perhaps you can uh, tell us a little bit more just about the uh, like um, farm to table and farm to barrel. Like farm to table is, I think, more uh, a widely recognized expression now. So perhaps tell us a little bit about uh, farm to barrel and what that means for for Persephone. Sure. Uh, you know, I think the, the whole expression really isn't just about sort of beer, but the whole farm to table movement is about understanding and really trying to improve our food chain, and, you know, right from everything from the agriculture and the farming, you know, that is so critical to producing food, to processing, to consumption, and really asking ourselves, how do we improve our food value chain across that across that spectrum. Um, and so we're, you know, you know, we're trying to make a difference in each of them. We're trying to show what a sustainable and regenerative farm looks like. We're trying to do uh, sustainable processing. So, so not unlike Stephen and, and Carbon is doing, we're looking at our water usage. We're looking at our energy uses. We're looking at carbon dioxide recapture. We're looking at a number of different sustainability uh, opportunities. Um, and uh, and we did a project with Telus Ag actually that fully traces the barley for all of our pilsners and loggers are now fully traceable barley malt. Uh, barley malt, um, right from the seed to the glass, we know exactly where that food has been in the value chain. Um, and then finally, to connect with our consumers and really use our platform, you know, every single one of our cans of beers or boxes that boxes in the cans um, talks about sustainability, talks about the impact that our food uh, system has and, and where opportunities are for improving that. Um, and so using our platform is a way for us to engage the consumer end of the, of the, um, of the value chain of the food value chain in, in doing what they can to make a contribution to. That's fantastic. Thank you uh, so much for that, Brian. There was uh, one question that uh, unfortunately we're not going to be able to, to get to today. We're out of time, but uh, it was a little bit around kind of COVID and how that was able to, to ramp up sales. So I'd encourage the attendee to actually visit Persephone's campaign page, um, frontfunder.com forward slash Persephone Brewing. Um, you can reach out to Brian directly. Also want to highlight the fact that, uh, you know, by making this really available and open to the entire community, you guys do have a hundred dollar minimum investment, which is great. So it is very accessible to everyone. So would recommend um, that you all check out their campaign page there. So thank you so much for the pitch presentation today, Brian. Thank you. All right, just as we uh, wrap things up for today, um, wanted to share just a, a couple slides on getting started from FrontFunder in case there's anyone new to the session today. So FrontFunder is Canada's leading equity crowdfunding platform. We make it easy for all Canadians to invest in Canada's most exciting startups and growth states businesses, just as you've seen from the pitches today. And typically we say from as little as $250, but uh, as I mentioned, Persephone is raising it $100. So um, these opportunities are very accessible to, to everyone across Canada. We've done now over 100 raises, um, raising over $120 million, and we've uh, you know got an investor community of over 34,000 now. Um, in addition to that, to, to get started, would recommend just uh, visiting the website, friendfunder.com. You can go have a look at each of the individual campaign pages there and, and hit uh, invest to get started. And if you have any questions throughout the, uh, the process at all, we've got a, an online chat with our investor relations team, or you can reach out to support at frontfunder.com with any questions. So thank you to everyone for, for tuning in today. Really appreciate your time. Um, thank you to all of our fantastic panelists from today. You delivered great pitches. Um, so nice to see uh, you guys even interacting as uh, businesses yourself and how you could perhaps work together in the future. So always love to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, like we said, it's really about uh, community capital um, is, is what equity crowdfunding really stands for. So it's uh, great to see the, the ways that these companies have incorporated the community into their business models as well. So thank you all for your time. Thank you for those who have attended and uh, we'll be back with another Pitch Perfect session, uh, hopefully within the next month or two. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.